listen to his word for us. Greetings and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, we celebrate CAC Loving Family Sunday. Why is there a CAC Loving Family Sunday for this year? As our CAC board ministry deliberate the different challenges that our churches face in today's day and age, we are certain that the family plays an important role. Families are crucial, both now and in the future. They play a vital role in creation as well as in God's kingdom. We hope that the Loving Family Sunday will intentionally draw our attention to family life marital relationship, parent-child relationships, and the importance of passing on a legacy of faith to our children. That is why I encourage every local church to form a ministry committee that looks into family life by implementing systematic and strategic plans to help resource the congregation in imparting biblical family values as well as local church support. The scriptures text for today is from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbol on your hands and bind them on your forehead. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Brothers and sisters, the Bible reminds us that the family is critical for passing on a legacy of faith. Today, families are under great pressure. We see this manifested in different ways, such as the highest divorce rate, poor mental health, suicides, family violence, depression, and more. Our families inhabit a world that has been described by some as a V-U-C-A world. V stands for volatile. U stands for uncertain, C stands for complex, A stands for ambiguous. This is the world we are living in now. In a VUCA world, a situation of constant, unpredictable change is now the norm. We are living in a world that is fast-paced with an unpredictable future. In such a situation, we may find ourselves not knowing how to respond, how to adapt and strengthen our values and faith in our family lives. Let me quickly introduce each of the four aspects. V stands for volatile. It refers to rapid and unpredictable changes. In today's society, change is rapid and hard to control. Take for an example, the recent development of artificial intelligence and the rise of chat GPT, which is trained to follow an instruction in the prompt and able to provide a detailed response. It can even help you to write a curriculum and a thesis. The boom in artificial intelligence platform 
like ChatGPT, has potential to disrupt many people's lives, their jobs, and the whole economic system. With such drastic and rapid changes and the unpredictable consequences, people are becoming fearful on the next step to take. The developers of other similar artificial intelligence tools are themselves not fully certain of the magnitude of the future impact such tools could have on society. This is the world we are now in. You describe a world that is uncertain. The present is unclear and the future is uncertain, making it hard for us to prepare for what is to come. Especially for those of us who are so used to being in control, such uncertainty can make us feel uneasy and anxious. And sometimes we will find it hard to adapt. How are we today to face the unpredictable future? Even for tomorrow. C stands for complex. In today's society, many issues are complex. They involve different viewpoints and factors, some of which may be intricately interconnected. Cause and effect are obscured by many layers, making one feel confused and lost. Everyone has their own opinions and narratives, which is true and which is false. Some may even question if there is a need to identify the truth or falsehood. Is there a way to coexist? Living in a plural society with countless viewpoints can be overwhelming. A stands for ambiguous. A lack of clarity and difficulty in understanding exactly what the situation is. If we lack clarity in our views and we are uncertain about the right value, then when we observe what is happening in our society, we may end up falling into confusion or worse, error. We are unable to articulate the problem we are seeing in society or identify its root cause, let alone provide solution. In ambiguous situations, all the facts and ideologies are not clear. What seems to be right might in fact be wrong. Dear brothers and sisters, such a VUCA world is a tremendous threat to our society, our family, even our nation, and also the church are not spared. How are we to respond? How are we to navigate family's life in such a VUCA world? This is a question for which I alone cannot provide the answers. We need all hands on deck to respond to the impact and challenges we are facing today. This is why our church needs to minister to families more intentionally. It is for the reason that we have initiated the Loving Family Sunday. We need all our CEC churches to prioritize family life ministry. You can do so by investing resources to position families as a hub of Christian nurture and to be intentioned in responding to the challenges families are facing today. Probably we can start by evaluating our church activities like cell groups ministry, discipleship programs, and more. How can we help our brother and sister to strengthen family relationship, to build 
Christ-centered home based on biblical values and be effective in passing on our Christian faith. Christian author Samuel L. Hamilton in his book, The Families, the Center of Religious Education, has written, Church and family, being a Christian organization, are closely intertwined and mutually interdependent. They are like conjoined twins. And if you were to dissect them, one or both would perish. In such a disordered world, if the church does not make families the pillar of formative Christian education, the church will lose her ability to live out her fullest potential. I am most certain that if our family are not situated in a Christian spiritual environment, they can never become thriving, Christ-centered family. Such a Christian spiritual environment is to be established by the church. I fully agree with his perspective. Let us work hard together to nurture the faith of our next generation. Let our Christian faith be passed on from generation to generation. Let me share three points to respond to the challenging time we are in. First of all, we need a clear conviction to the challenge of the times. We see such threat clearly in the life of Joshua. In Joshua chapter 24, Joshua reminds the Israelites why they ought to serve God. It is all because of the tremendous grace that God has showered upon them. This grace is seen in His choosing them to be His people. In His reminding them to the exodus from Egypt and in His leading them into promised land of Canaan. In verses 14 to 18, He challenged them to fear the Lord and serve Him with all faithfulness. In response to God's faithfulness and love, He has shown toward generation of Israelites since the time of Abraham. As the leader, Joshua models such faith and obedience by declaring, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord and challenge the Israelites to choose for themselves who they will serve. From verse 19 onward to verse 27, Joshua made a covenant for the people and there at Shechem, he reaffirmed for them decrees the and law. He warned the Israelites that as part of the covenant, they must remain loyal to God and obedient to His word. They will face the consequences if they fail. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord as witness to their covenant. Dear brothers and sisters, in VUCA times, how are we to respond? First and foremost, we must be resolute to be clear about the command that God has given to us. You and I have received the timeless truth of God's word. We must make a firm decision to follow and serve God so that when we face a different and rapidly changing environment, we can make a clear stand. We can stand firm in the midst of challenges. This is the challenge that Joshua set before the Israelites as they prepared to enter and settle down in the Promised Land. They were going to experience many changes. There will be different kinds of temptation and different demand for their worship. 
It is important, therefore, that they declare their decision to follow and serve God before they enter. Today, this is the very same challenge we face. In such a challenging time as this, in a time of uncertainties, you need to decide if you and your family will serve the Lord. This is the very first and crucial conviction we need to assert. Only so will we be able to face the uncertain future. Second, in challenging times, we need to be centered on the unchanging truth of the cross. We need to be confident in our understanding of what Jesus Christ has accomplished through the cross. The cross reminds us that we were once doomed to condemnation. We are sinners who were deserving of His just and righteous wrath. We can neither save ourselves from our sins or redeem ourselves through our deeds. The cross reveals God's mercies and righteousness at the same time. It tells us that God is righteous. He hates sin, but He loves the people He created according to His image. Because of His righteousness, He sent His beloved and only begotten Son, Jesus Christ to the world to atone for our sin so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. On the cross, Jesus took the punishment our sin deserved. He sacrificed, turned away the judgment we will have received. Through His redemption, humanity can be released from enslavement to sin and be reconciled to God. Not only do we have eternal life, we receive a new identity as children of God and have an everlasting relationship with Him. The cross also reminds us that we live in a fallen world, corrupted and tainted by sin. This propensity to sin is still in us. We still sin because we, though forgiven, are still fallen human beings. We will have some fraud in our life and are still far from perfect. There may still be some imperfection in our motive and the thing that we do that are sometimes not pleasing to God. We need to have a constant humility before the mighty hand of God and stand in the true grace of God. We need to comprehend how precious our identity in Christ truly is. And at the same time, we need to remember the damaging consequences that sin can bring into our lives. It is only when we center our lives on the grace and truth, God's salvation through the cross, that we can be living witnesses for God in today's days and age. We often neglect the teaching on God's righteousness and seldom mention the word sin. Today, we tend to skew our conversation toward God's loving kindness, unconditional love, and God's blessing. However, all this should not lead us to forget the facts of God's holiness. Dear brothers and sisters, we need to be more aware of sin, to recognize actions that does not accord with biblical teaching and fall short of God's standards of holiness. As we nurture the next generation in our faith community, we need to be vigilant and mindful of what is pleasing or displeasing to God. We need to walk in the light, 
We need to be very clear of what we believe in so that we can reject half-truth and false teachings. Only when we experience the power of the cross, experience the profound love of God and the forgiveness of sins can we see clearly and respond to the challenges and impact brought about by different values and lifestyles today. I hope we can continue to keep ourselves equipped and respond effectively to the challenges we face, providing timely answer to Christian grace. We live in a time which demand that we can articulate our faith clearly and understand what we believe in. Most importantly, let us experience the life-changing power of God's truth. No one can challenge or deny of life-changing experience in the Holy Spirit. When you have a deep understanding of God's truth and when you experience the reality of God's presence, you will have an anchor of your soul as you encounter rapid changes and an unpredictable future. We need and must experience God's enduring and unchanging love. Lastly, as God's kingdom people, we need to consistently develop in Christian character. In the words of John Wesley, this is holiness of heart and life. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus Christ began his Sermon on the Mount by teaching the Beatitudes. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Brother and sister, through this passage in Matthew, Jesus described the characters of God's kingdom. These are not conditioned for salvation. The Beatitude show us the godly characteristics that people of God's kingdom ought to live up and develop. After we trust in Christ alone for our salvation, we embark on a new faith journey where we will grow into spiritual maturity. That is to become more and more like the person of God designed you to be and more and more like Jesus. Growing in holiness of heart and life is a teaching we urgently need to retrieve. We are to be in the world but not of the world. When we live our life according to God's word and reflect it by our words and action, we will be effective witnesses for Christ. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, clearly teaches us that the Holy Spirit produced this kind of fruit in our life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let us encourage one another to strive to grow, to mature and to develop godly characters, bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit 
as we live in a Christ-centered and God-glorifying life as God's people. I urge you, in the face of the pressures that Christian families face, to do these three things. A clear conviction, a cross-centered life, and a consistent Christian character. Dear brothers and sisters, together, let us commit to work closely to build out our families. Let us not neglect the importance of families in our plans and ministry, in our various churches and districts. Let us respond to the challenges today with courage and wisdom from God, all in the light of Christ and what He is calling us to. Let us stand in the gap to pray fervently, pray more than ever before for our families, our churches, especially for the collaboration between family life ministry and family in our churches. May I invite you to also pray for tomorrow's Loving Families Carnival. This is a special carnival where church members and their family from our 17 local churches will gather as one to celebrate family life. During the carnival, we will be reciting our family pledge, affirming the biblical view of marriage and family. May our Chinese Inner Conference be a church that is after God's heart fulfilling the vision of a strong, disciple-making faith community, equipped to pass on our Christian faith from generation to generation, as we hold fast to the truth of God's Word. May we experience God's favour upon us, our family, and our children, and their children, for many generations to come. Amen.